Hello and welcome to HIVRNA Test Guide Podcast, your trusted source for HIV testing, with over 4,500 plus testing labs across the United States. Okay, picture this. What if managing HIV didn't mean, you know, taking pills every single day for the rest of your life? Right. What if your own immune system could be trained to do the job? That's the idea. We're talking about a therapeutic vaccine, ICVX, aiming for what we call a functional cure a real potential game changer. And that's exactly what we're digging into today. The new phase I results for ICVX, this uh, DNA vaccine from Immunocure Biotech. Pretty exciting stuff. Absolutely. It's been generating a lot of buzz. So our goal here is to break down how it works, what these results actually mean, and, you know, what's next, especially with phase two coming up in 2025. We've got the research papers, the trial data. We're going to piece it all together for you. Basically give you the full picture on why this is such a big deal in HIV research. Okay, let's unpack this. So before we get into ICVX, we really need to acknowledge antiretroviral therapy, RT. I mean, it's been incredible, hasn't it? Oh, totally. A lifesaver for millions. It transformed HIV from, well, a near certain death sentence into something people can manage long term, live healthy lives truly a medical miracle. It really is. But there's always a but, isn't there? Art manages the virus. It doesn't eliminate it. It doesn't cure it. And that means lifelong daily medication, perfect adherence. Exactly. You miss doses, the virus comes roaring back. Plus, you've got potential side effects, the cost over a lifetime. Yeah, and just the mental load, right? That constant daily reminder, the stigma that sadly still exists. Precisely. Which is why the push for a therapeutic vaccine is so strong. And we need to be clear here, this isn't like a flu shot to prevent infection. Right. This is for people already living with HIV. Yes. The aim isn't prevention, it's control. Training the immune system to suppress the virus on its own without needing those daily drugs. So it sort of mimics what RT does chemically, but biologically, using your own body. That's the goal. Mm. To achieve what's called a functional cure. The virus might still be there hiding in tiny amounts. But your immune system keeps it so low it's undetectable and can't be transmitted, drug-free. That's the dream scenario. Okay, let's get into the science a bit, because ICVX is a DNA vaccine. How does that actually work? How does, like, injecting DNA teach your body to fight HIV? Well, it's quite clever. ICVX uses specially engineered DNA sequences. When these get into your cells, they basically give instructions. Instructions to do what? To produce tiny, harmless pieces of the HIV virus. Just fragments. These fragments aren't infectious, but they act like uh, warning signals. Like putting up wanted posters for the immune system. Exactly like that. Your T cells, the immune system's fighter cells, see these fragments, learn to recognize them, and then they get activated to find and destroy any actual cells infected with the real HIV. Okay, but we've heard about therapeutic vaccine attempts before. What makes ICVX different? The research mentions this PD-1 modification. That seems important. It's absolutely central. So to think of T cells fighting a chronic infection like HIV, mm -hmm. over time, they can get tired, exhausted. Like burnout. Sort of, yeah. The virus actually helps install this molecular break called PD-1 onto the T cells. It slows them down, makes them less effective. T cell exhaustion. And if your fighters are exhausted, the virus wins. Right. So the really neat part about ICVAX is it doesn't just show the wanted poster. It also includes a component designed to essentially disable that PD-1 break. So it keeps the T cells from getting tired, keeps them active. Exactly. It helps sustain the fight. You need that long-term persistent immune response if you want to control the virus without drugs, potentially for years or even decades. Okay, that makes sense. You need endurance, not just a quick sprint. Here's where it gets really interesting. So the phase I trial, it sounds like they did it by the book randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled, that's crucial for reliable results, yeah. Absolutely, the gold standard. They enrolled 45 participants, all living with HIV, mm -hmm. but importantly, all already stable on RT with undetectable viral loads. Why is that important, that they were already suppressed? Well, it creates a clean baseline. The RT is already holding the virus down, so any new immune activity they measure can be more clearly linked to the vaccine itself, not just, you know, the body randomly fighting back harder. Gotcha. And the main goals was safety first. Right. Then figuring out the dose. That's standard for phase I. They tested three doses, one milligram, two milligram, and a four milligram in different groups. Yeah. People got shots at week zero, four, eight, twelve, and then a booster later on at week thirty-six. Okay. Primary goal. Okay. Is it safe? Tolerable. Secondary goal. Does it actually wake up those HIV specific T cells? 
and the safety results looked really good from what I read. That's always the first major hurdle. Hugely positive on that front. It was very well tolerated. Side effects were mostly mild. You know, the usual suspects. Mm -hmm. Sore arm, maybe feeling a bit tired, a slight fever. Nothing unexpected. And critically, no serious vaccine-related issues. Correct. The reports explicitly state no serious adverse events linked to ICVX. And nobody dropped out because of side effects. That's a really strong safety signal moving forward. Okay, safe is good. Essential even. But did it work? Did it actually boost the immune response? The immunogenicity part? Ah, no, that was the exciting part. Yes, it did. They saw really robust T-cell responses. In the group that got the best dose, there was more than a two-fold increase in the activity of those specific T-cells compared to the placebo group. Wow, so double the activity. That's not trivial. Not at all. It's a clear, statistically significant jump in the exact type of immune response you'd want to see for controlling HIV. And this ties into maybe the most fascinating bit comparing the response to elite controllers. What does that mean exactly? Right. So elite controllers are these extremely rare people, maybe one in 200 or so, yeah. who naturally control HIV down to undetectable levels without ever taking art. Their immune systems just handle it incredibly effectively. A natural functional cure. Basically, yes. And the striking thing was the type and strength of the T-cell response generated by ICVX in some participants looked very similar to the response seen in these elite controllers. So the vaccine is essentially teaching the body to act like one of these rare, naturally protected individuals. That's the hope. It suggests the vaccine is pushing the immune system in the right direction, mimicking nature's own best-case scenario for HIV control. Okay, but let's push back a bit. Elite controllers are rare for a reason, right? Their genetics are different. How confident can we be that this vaccine-induced mimicry will actually hold up long-term in the average person once RT is stopped, especially with HIV being so variable? That is the critical question for Phase 2. Phase I proved the vaccine can generate the response safely. Phase 2 has to prove that response is durable and effective without the safety net of RT. So durability is key. It is. The optimism comes from targeting that PD-1 pathway we talked about, trying to prevent T-cell exhaustion. The thinking is, if you prevent the burnout, the response might last much longer, maybe needing just occasional booster shots, like, you know, a tetanus booster. Right. Which brings us to the next steps, phase two. Exactly. The focus shifts now from safety and immune response signals to actual clinical efficacy. Phase two trials will be larger, involve more people. And they'll actually stop the RIT for some participants. Correct. Under very careful monitoring, of course. They'll withdraw our ed and see if the immune response stimulated by ICVX alone is enough to keep the virus suppressed. That's the moment of truth. And there's also this interesting update about delivery partnering with Pharmajet and using something called the Tropis device. Needle-free? Yeah, that's a really smart move, thinking ahead to a potential real-world rollout. The Tropis device uses a high-pressure stream of fluid, like a tiny jet, to deliver the vaccine into the tissue instead of a needle. Why is that better? Just less pain. It's partly that, but it's more about scalability and access. Think about global health settings, places with limited infrastructure. Needle-free means potentially easier administration, maybe by community health workers, not just nurses or doctors. No needle disposal issues, less training needed. Ah, so it could make it way easier to get the vaccine out to everyone, everywhere, if it proves effective. That's the idea. If you have a functional cure, you need a practical way to deliver it globally. This could be a big part of that. And phase two won't just be in China, where phase I was done. No, the plan is definitely to expand internationally. Mm. You need data from diverse populations, different genetic backgrounds, different HIV subtypes to really prove it works broadly. Phase two is where it goes global. Of course, HIV is notoriously difficult. If this doesn't work in phase two, despite the promising phase one, what's the most likely culprit? What's the biggest mountain still to climb? Oh, it almost always comes back to the same thing. The viral reservoir. The hidden virus. Exactly. Even when art knocks the virus way down in the blood, HIV can hide out dormant inside certain long-lived immune cells. These reservoirs are scattered throughout the body, lymph nodes, gut tissue, maybe even the brain. And they're just sleeping there. Pretty much. They're invisible to most immune responses and unaffected by art. But if you stop art... They wake up and start pumping out virus again. That's the problem. For ICVX, or any cure strategy, to truly work, the immune response it generates has to be powerful enough and widespread enough to find and control or eliminate these reactivated reservoir cells the moment RD stops. That is incredibly challenging. Phase 2 success really hinges on 
clearing that hurdle. And beyond the biology, there are practical issues too, right? For actually making and distributing something like this. Oh, absolutely. Manufacturing DNA vaccines at a massive scale is complex. It's not like making aspirin. Then you've got regulatory approvals in dozens of different countries, which can be a maze. Plus the cost, I imagine. Years of huge trials, building factories. Exactly. The financial investment is enormous. Yeah. And ensuring it works equally well across all the different populations worldwide it's a massive scientific, logistical, and financial undertaking. So what does this all mean if ICVX pulls this off? Wow, it really changes everything about living with HIV, doesn't it? Moving from that daily pill routine to maybe a shot every few months or year. It's a fundamental shift. Imagine the freedom. Freedom from side effects, from the pharmacy runs, from that constant reminder. It could significantly reduce the psychological burden, the stigma. It basically empowers the person's own body to manage the condition. And even if this works, tools like HIV RNA testing, the viral load tests, they remain super important, right? Oh, absolutely critical. They won't go away. Yeah. During phase two, those tests are how researchers will track exactly how well the vaccine is controlling the virus once RT is stopped. It's the proof. It's the objective measure of success. And even if it's approved, you'd still need monitoring to ensure the control remains durable long-term. Okay, so summing up, ICVX phase, I looked good, safe, well-tolerated, sparked the right kind of immune response. Now it's on to phase two to see if it can actually let people stop taking daily art. Yep. So things to watch for. Definitely the phase two results on viral suppression without art. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Also data on how well that needle-free tropist system works in larger groups. Does it really improve things? And how long does the effect last? Do people yeah. need boosters and how often? Exactly. The durability question. We need long-term follow-up. And thinking bigger picture, the fact that they seem to be successfully mimicking elite controllers with this vaccine, that has implications beyond just HIV, doesn't it? It really does. I mean, if we can reliably engineer an immune response mm. that achieves drug-free control over a virus as complex and tricky as HIV mm. by tackling things like T-cell exhaustion, well, that's a powerful concept. So the final thought maybe is... Yeah, how far away are we from applying the same model mimicking natural elite control, preventing immune exhaustion to design therapeutic vaccines for other chronic viral infections? Think about hepatitis B, or maybe even viruses like herpes simplex that cause recurrent issues. Could this approach unlock functional cures across a whole range of viruses? A whole new way of managing long-term viral diseases. It could be. The success of ICVs might just provide the blueprint.